Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab. Anthony here, and as promised, we are back with a proper look at Corsair's AF120 RGB Slim fan. So this is the RGB version of the previous Corsair Slim fan that we looked at in our recent Slim 120mm fan group test, which I highly recommend you check out if you're in the market for a new 120mm Slim fan, or you just want to check out which ones are the best for you to be checking out and uh, pointing your wallet at at the moment. And um, the two fans, pretty much the same. You get, um, obviously, the slightly transparent blades on the RGB version. You get RGB lighting, and you get a uh, lighting node core in the box of the double pack of fans that we've been sent over by Corsair here. So what we're doing today is checking out what you get in the box of the double pack. We'll be looking at the performance data, um, which is pretty much the same as what we had in our recent group test, so no real surprises there. We'll be putting a couple of these fans into a mini ITX PC to see what they actually look like and coming to some conclusions at the end. So first of all, thanks to Corsair for sending over these double packs of the AF120 RGB Slim. Much appreciated, guys. And also, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Liking and commenting on this video just helps punch me through the algorithm and gets me noticed. So all your support there is very, very much appreciated. I also love hearing about what you guys are doing with Slim fans. Have they come to your rescue in uh, an air-cooled or water-cooled build recently? Um, do you just love the fact that they that they exist and just make your life easier when building mini, mini ITX PCs? Love hearing what you guys think of these products and also of my videos. Don't forget to like this video as well, just helps get me noticed. And also, most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. So your subscriptions always mean a lot and it just means that you can also be notified of upcoming new videos. Also, my sponsor today is SCD Keys and here is a sponsorship message from them. Our sponsor today is scdkey.com, where right now you can get great deals on software such as Windows 10, Windows 11, and Microsoft Office. And even better is I've got a 25% discount code to share with you guys. Windows 10 Professional, for example, which is fully upgradable for free to Windows 11. All you have to do is click buy now, enter the code CRT25 into the promotion code box, click apply, and the US price will drop from $22.09 down to just $16.57, and in the UK, you'll see the price fall to just £12.79. Once you've paid, head over to your order page, click the Get Key button, and copy your Windows key code. When you're in Windows, you wanna move your mouse over to the Start button, right click, go to Settings, then Update and Security, and then move up to activation. And finally, click on change your product key, copy and paste your brand new product key into the box, click next, then click activate, and your Windows 10 installation is now activated. You can do the exact same thing with Office 2021 Professional, CRT 25, click apply, and you will see a hefty discount. Thanks again to SCD Key for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so here we are with the Corsair AF120 RGB Slim, and what we're going to do now is a quick unboxing to see what you get inside the double pack of these fans. So as I mentioned earlier, the fan is available as a standalone product if you just want to add more to an existing system. For example, if you buy one of these double packs first, uh, which comes with the lighting node core, um, which we'll get to in a second. and to start with though, we're just gonna have a look and see what you actually get in terms of the fans. So with the actual fan, you've got the usual four pin PWM fan header or fan, uh, fan connector to actually connect to a fan header. And uh, that means that most motherboards will be able to control these absolutely fine. And then you also get the Corsair four pin RGB connector which you'll need to connect to one of Corsair's hubs. So that's something that we'll get to in a minute. Um, again, the fans have the anti-vibration mounts on both sides so and it feels really well made as well. I know that uh, a lot of you have commented um, owning the Arctic Slim fans that the fan blades feel pretty flimsy. Well, these feel pretty sturdy. They're not as flimsy, anywhere near as flimsy as the Arctic fans. And that, that can be something that the Slim fans do suffer from just because there's less material there and you know they're kind of dealing with the similar designs. So it just means that they can be a bit flimsy, but that's definitely not the case with this fan. The bearing feels really good. It's um, 
very free flowing when you spin it and um, the blades feel pretty strong as well so the whole frame there's virtually no flex in there at all so it's a really really well made fan so let's see what else we get and uh, just gonna see if I can actually get this out so what we have here is an interesting screw pack because we don't just have the standard fan screws obviously we've just got the usual fan screws that will go through your case um, and then into the uh, the fan holes like so you also get some slim fan screws for radiators now these things are actually super super useful because you don't have um, or you can't use the screws that come with your radiators even slim radiators don't come with slim screws and this is kind of a, a bit of a hole in the slim radiator and slim fan arena at the moment is that you have to buy the screws separately um, and when I first got into using slim fans and slim radiators or slim fans specifically I actually had to make my own they, they literally weren't any slim fan, uh, slim fan screws out there so what you don't want to do is to, is to use standard radiator screws with these things because on most radiators you will the screw will be much too long it will pass straight through the fan and it will actually embed itself and damage the channels in your radiator and I've, I've done that once or twice even cutting my own screws I think the first time I did it one of them was slightly too long and I ended up puncturing my radiator so you definitely don't want to do that and that is what these screws are for if you see here they pass through but they only pass through by about five mil or so and uh, once you've sat the fan on your radiator that should be absolutely fine now the thread here is I think that's 632 um, is that 632 or is that M3 I can't quite tell with the um, looking through the camera and I'm a bit too far away from the screws but basically these screws will fit uh, Corsair radiators and you need to make sure that you will have the right um, screw for your particular radiator so this is the thicker type of screw um, I'm pretty sure so it's it's whatever <laughs> whichever one is the thicker one so it's like the big chunky screws that you um, basically connect your or screw your power supply in with is what you use on hard disks it's what most case panels use as well it's not the thinner type of screw which you might use to um, connect SSDs to your case or perhaps secure your motherboard to your case that kind of thing so it's the thicker type of PC screw that you get here so if your radiator uses the thinner type of screw I think alpha cool radiators use the thinner type uh, potentially um, these screws will not work with those type of radiators so you need to be very very sure what you're actually getting um, and I will try and put a um, uh, a note on the video here just confirming which type of screw this is so you can match it to your radiator or to make sure that you get more but it's nice that Corsair actually includes these because virtually no one else does I think maybe ID cooling included um, included fan screws and they were either 632 or M3 I can't honestly remember but it was uh, you know obviously one of the types that you would use on a radiator but the trouble is it's like you can include one but when you're not including the other it's kind of pointless because half people out there will actually have one type or the other in terms of their radiators but with Corsair it obviously makes sense to include one type which is the thicker type which is compatible with its own radiators so well done Corsair for including those because it means that you can just unpack these fans strap them straight to your radiator you don't need to worry about buying any extra screws or anything like that and obviously four screws in the in the box which is enough to secure that fan to your radiator so that's what you get with each fan you get four screws um, both the standard fan screws and the radiator screws and what we're going to do now is check out the lighting mode core which is the RGB controller that you get with these things so what you'll uh, notice is that there are no standard RGB connectors here you will need to connect this thing up to your uh, your motherboard and uh, use a SATA cable as well to um, power this thing and then you can use Corsair's IQ software to control the RGB lighting now it's not going to control the fan speed so you'll need to invest in a commander um, fan speed controller from Corsair if you want to do that so the idea is you need to use your motherboard if you don't want to do that you'll need to use your motherboard to control the fan speed so this is for your RGB lighting 
Uh, the plus side is that you don't need to use your motherboard software, which is uh, generally, um, I try not to use the motherboard software for RGB lighting because it's had security issues in the past and it, they're usually a little bit clunky, especially compared to Corsair's IQ software. So that's what you'll need to load up to get this working. Comes with a sticky pad so you can connect it on your uh, connect it to your PC somewhere. Um, the only downside here really is that this is just one extra component that you're going to need to fit into your Mini, mini RTX case. Um, some Mini RTX cases might not have the space for this and probably my main concern is that you need to add another cable to your Mini RTX system. So if you've got a modular power supply like SFX or SFXL and you've removed all those cables to make your uh, cable tidying time a lot easier, which is absolutely what you should be doing in a Mini ITX case, you're going to have to grab that SATA cable back out of the box and connect it to your power supply so you can power the lighting node core. So that's just something that you need to do and you will also need to route the USB header cable as well over to your motherboard. So that's what you get in the box, you get fan screws, you get short radiator screws which is a really really good idea and you also get the lighting node core to connect to the IQ ecosystem with Corsair and these are just some of the reasons why this fan is maybe a little bit more expensive than others out there. My test system was water-cooled using an Intel Core i5-11600K to get the CPU temperature results and the airflow results were obtained using an anemometer in meters per second and that was recording the airflow coming out the far side of a radiator while the sound measurements were taken from a meter away using a sound meter. Moving on to the data now then, we have quite a bit of stuff to get through, but I do have a, a graph for those of you that just want an at-a-glance look at how a fan has done overall, and this is the one for you. So basically what we have here is a point scoring system based on where the fan came in our testing um, in every single graph. So if you gave a point to each fan, depending on where it came in the graphs, this is how it would look overall. So obviously we can see the Silverstone, SST, um, Air Slimmer, 120, ARGB, that came at top by quite a long way with 175 points. If we skip down to the Corsair, you see it came in fourth place overall. So it's a pretty decent fan. Overall, it beats the Arctic, it beats the Noctua, it beats the Scythe Kaze Flex, which is the original version. There is a new version of the Kaze Flex out uh, that I'll be testing soon, hopefully. It's better than the Thermalrite, uh, the, the Gelid, Prolimatech, ID Cooling, and the original um, Silverstone Slim Fan, which was absolutely terrible by comparison. So Corsair does have a pretty decent fan on its hands here in terms of Slim Fans, and it obviously has the RGB lighting as well. Another graph that's probably going to be very useful is this one, which is just having the prices overlaid over the previous graph, basically. So we've got the overall score, and then we've got the price in dark blue. And as you can see, the Corsair AF120 Slim, around $27 to $30, depending on uh, where you shop. Now, the one interesting thing is that the non-RGB version and the RGB version that we're looking at today are pretty much the same price. There's like a dollar or two in it at most. So... That's kind of strange. I would have expected the RGB version to cost significantly more. But uh, on Newegg right now, uh, they're within like a dollar or two of each other. So what I haven't done is um, basically redone any of the grass and having two Corsair fans in there because I think that would... That's just adding another load of data to the graph and making it even more complicated. So what I've done is just reuse the old graphs and uh, we've just kept the same data um, in terms of price and airflow and efficiency and everything for the previous fan because the, the two fans are basically the same. They've got exactly the same fan design. They've got the same bearing, the same speed range. The only thing that differs really are trans slightly translucent, translucent blades on the RGB version um the uh, and the rgb lighting of course that's uh, they're the only things that are different so that's the pricing overlaid over the score and we'll now move on to some slightly more hardcore data 
First up, we have the airflow results, and we've got three to look at here. First of all, at 1,000 RPM, which is generally where your fans will be sitting at uh, just above idle. So kind of medium speed if you're watching Netflix, doing something that's moderately demanding. That's typically where your fans will sit. And uh, honestly, below this, uh, with slim fans, you'll be very, very hard pressed to notice any difference in noise or airflow but just because they're very slim and don't generally disturb as much air as larger fans so I didn't really see much point in testing um, speeds below this so this um, is followed on by 1500 rpm which of course is a bit more powerful and is actually where uh, some of the fans actually top out. So we've got, um, I think we had to drop one fan, the Pro Limitech, because it didn't actually spin that fast. And then full speed, obviously just putting each fan up to its maximum speed and um, seeing how it performs there. So at 1000 RPM, um, in terms of meters per second of airflow, the Silverstone is obviously best. The Corsair not quite managing a mid-table result there, so it's not um, particularly efficient at this uh, at this. RPM and it's pretty much the same when it comes to 1500 RPM. So we've got uh, 1.14 meters a second compared to 1.42 meters a second for the Corsair fan at 1500 RPM. However, thanks to its very, very powerful full speed setting, which is around 2000 RPM, it does rocket up the graph all the way up to 1.82 meters a second. So while in terms of being RPM normalized, it's not the great, not the greatest out there. It hasn't got the best efficiency in terms of RPMs uh, and creating airflow. But in terms of raw airflow, if you want something that can really punch um, through radiators and those kind of things at full speed when you need to, it's a pretty good option. In fact, it's the uh, second only to the Silverstone on test. Moving on to the noise results now then, and for those of you that aren't familiar with the decibel scale, it is not linear. Um, in general, the human ear perceives a doubling in the noise level every 10 decibels, um, and that's what we've used later on to calculate our, um, our efficiency, efficiency and value scores, because um, if you kind of take things at face value here, things um, don't really... Uh, don't really follow because, as I've mentioned, the decibel scale isn't linear. So um, there are other ways of uh, calculating it, of course, but to the human ear, it's widely regarded that a doubling of noise is perceived for every 10 decibels you increase the noise by. So just bear that in mind when looking at these graphs. So full speed, um, the Corsair did unfortunately produce the most noise. Um, it obviously has epic airflow at that, at that speed, but the Silverstone uh, produced a little bit more airflow for a reasonably significant three decibels lower. And we've obviously got uh, some uh, much, much quieter fans there. And uh, this is where other fans such as the Arctic and the Noctua do kind of come into their own in, uh, to some extent. They don't, uh, they've got uh, pretty low noise levels, but then they do have lower RPMs as well. So there's a bit more efficiency going on, on there with some of the other fans. Um, but if you're not too fussed about noise, then the Corsair does have awesome airflow, um, and it uh, but it does come at a cost of noise. So going to the, uh, the 1500 RPM then, so that's dropping the speed down a bit. And as you can see here, the, uh, the Corsair does drop significantly in terms of the noise. It actually sits in the mid table with the uh, quietest fan at the top being the Arctic and at 1500 RPM obviously the Pro Limitech um, wasn't able to do that but I've just highlighted that fact there um, the Corsair mid-table but obviously as we saw in the previous graph the airflow does drop off significantly as well so dropping down to 1000 RPM again we saw the Corsair not performing too well there and uh, sadly here it was one of the louder fans on test although there were only three or four um, uh, decibels between the lowest and the highest results here. Moving on to our new test now then, and this is CPU temperature with the fan strapped to a radiator and cooling an Intel Core i5-11600K. So as we can see, the Corsair doing a reasonable job at full speed, as you'd expect, given it's got the highest noise level and one of the higher airflow rates at this speed. And um, again, though, it is outdone by a couple of fans, the Silverstone Air Slimmer AS120 uh, RGB, again, offering a couple of degrees 
lower temperature, and also the Scythe, Kaze Flex, and Noctua are also pretty uh, pretty good at full speed as well. And I believe both of those have a slightly lower RPM than the Corsair, which isn't great. Uh, a great look for Corsair here. So still, it's a pretty good result, but obviously thanks to very uh, a lot of airflow and a lot, a lot of RPM. So the 1500 RPM result sees the Corsair slip down the graph, which again is not that expect, uh, not that un uh, not that surprising because we've seen that the airflow does tend to drop off uh, at 1500 and 1000 RPM. 1000 RPM though, it does actually do reasonably well. So not amazing airflow there, but we are seeing. Uh, a decent result and um, a decent result compared to the poorer performing fans on test such as the ID Cooling um, 12015 XT, the Silverstone FN 124. That's the non. Uh, that's not the air slimmer. The air slimmer is obviously sitting at the uh, at the top of the top of the graph here. The Art Take and Not Tour also not doing great at a thousand RPM. So here we have noise normalized results. So this is basically setting each fan to a specific noise level and seeing which one generates more airflow. So this was a highly requested result from my previous group test a couple of years ago or something like that. Um, and it's kind of important because if you've got like a set noise level that is acceptable to you, and you set your fans to that specific noise level, these other fans are, or basically the fans that sit at the top of these graphs are the ones that you'll want to pick. Obviously, that's that's obvious. That's, that, that's kind of where way you'd want to pick them from a lot of other tests as well. But here, you'll basically be getting the most airflow for that specific noise level. So starting with 44 dBA, and again, this is kind of like a, an idle to mid-load um, noise levels. So this is if you're just generally sitting next to your PC, you're watching Netflix, you're maybe um, dishing out some low to medium loads, uh, those kind of things. So this is what you'll uh, probably be wanting to focus on. And um, here the Corsair is um, offering kind of a mid-table result. So in terms of um, airflow to noise efficiency, it's not the best fan here. It's kind of a mid-table result, so there are quite a few other options you might want to consider when it comes to offering the most airflow for the least noise. And dialing things up to 50 dBA, which is nearing the uh, the maximum uh, speed of a lot of fans on test. Um, some of them did go a fair bit higher than this. Obviously, the Corsair went up all the way to 62 dBA, I believe, so it does offer a fair bit more airflow at the top end. We get uh, just under one meter, uh, one meter per second of airflow for the Corsairs. So obviously, again, not an amazing result. Um, I think the fan is kind of generally better way uh, much further down uh, the RPM range, and obviously it offers incredible airflow at the peak speed. But the downside is that it's not great in terms of efficiency at generating lots of airflow for little noise. Um, that's just not what it's great at. So not an amazing result here for the Corsair AF120 Slim. Now, talking of efficiency, that is pretty much what we're focusing on in the three graphs here at full speed, 1500 RPM and 1000 RPM. This is the airflow to noise ratio. So what we've done here is reworked the noise data so it's more in tune with what you are actually hearing with your human ear. So as I mentioned um, a, a few minutes ago, we've got, um, we generally perceive a doubling of noise every 10 decibels. So that's what I've reworked the data to, to kind of give more of a human subjective feel to, uh, to that data rather than just listing the data, which isn't that useful because at the end of the day, I'm doing this for humans to look at and not machines. So the full speed airflow to noise ratio, obviously the higher the result, the better here. Um, again, we've got the Silverstone uh, offering a really, really good airflow to noise ratio. Now, the Corsair obviously um, has excellent airflow at full speed, not quite as good as the Silverstone, but it offers excellent airflow. Um, but it was reasonably loud as well at that, at that, uh, that speed. So that's why we've got uh, that's why it's sitting at the top of the graph here. Even though it generated a lot of noise, it did generate a lot of airflow as well, and that was enough to see off every other fan other than the Silverstone in this result. However, if we move down the table, we're obviously seeing the lack of um, decent airflow to noise ratio from the Corsair um, Slim fans. So that's when other fans such as the Alpha Cool 
um, the Jeled, the Rose, uh, the Rosewell, or a Casa fan, the Scythe Kaze Flex, they all start to become more viable. And um, interestingly, there's uh, there's quite a bit of movement from the other fans as well as you drop down the table here. It's basically how you're getting, how much airflow you're getting to noise. So it's uh, it's a, they're pretty interesting graphs. And if you're more interested in the efficiency of the fans and getting the most airflow for your uh, for the noise, basically, that these are um, some pretty interesting graphs to look at. So overall, you've got the uh, the decent range of the Corsair's speed and uh, shoving air through that radiator. Um, but if you actually look at the full spectrum, it doesn't do so well at low to mid ranges in terms of the speed or the actual airflow to noise ratio. Now, something you can't measure at home is sound quality because it's subjective. So all of us will have a slightly different opinion about how um, how pleasant a fan is to sit next to. So this one, the scores here are basically my own take on a on the sound quality of each fan. So generally, you don't want any kind of tone to the noise of a fan. You just want like a a gentle airflow noise that gradually gets louder at higher speeds. You don't really want any rattling or noise or tones or anything like that that can be annoying if you have to sit next to it for a long time. So that's basically what these scores are. So at full speed, obviously, there are different RPMs going on here. Um, but in general, you're looking at a, um, a better noise quality um, the further up the graph that you go. And we will be looking at sound quality ratios compared to other data in a, in just a second in our in one of our final graphs so at full speed um the corsair obviously generating a lot of noise and that's why i've only scored it two because while it did offer pretty good airflow um the silverstone offered around the same airflow actually it was it was slightly better but it was much much more pleasant to sit next to at that speed and there are a whole bunch of other fans that are generally more pleasant to sit next to and i think when it comes to mini icx cases sound quality uh, with fans is super super important because your case is usually sat on your desk pretty close to you uh, mine is it's just a, a couple of feet away uh, my um my meshlicious is uh, just a few feet away if i had an atx tower it would probably be on the floor or just further away on my desk because it's a lot larger. So you've also got the fact that the fans inside the case are probably closer to you as well, or at least um, they are probably closer to very open mesh panels and that kind of thing, whereas in an ATX tower, they might be behind closed panels and those kind of things. So sound quality, very, very important when it comes to slim fans, um, just due to the nature in which they're going to be used. So dropping down to 50 dBA, um, then we've got uh, every fan was uh, able to be included here. So we've got the Arctic actually offering the uh, best result. And really, there isn't a, a whole load of movement in the in the graph here at the top end. We've got the Arctic scoring top. So excellent sound quality from that fan. And uh, then we've got the Silverstone again in second place. Uh, Noctua actually rises up the graph uh, quite significantly. Thermal right sitting exactly where it did before. The Corsair jumping up a place at 50 dBA. So slightly more efficient here in terms of sound quality um, at this sound rating. So it's not a terrible result here for Corsair, but obviously there are a lot of, uh, a lot of fans here that do a lot better. So we've just got a couple of graphs to go through now then, and these are the airflow to noise quality ratio. So rather than airflow to noise, we've got airflow to noise quality, which is based on the score that we did in the last graph. So here we've obviously got the Silverstone sitting at the top of the graph again, obviously offers X, uh, very low decibels for the noise, but the sound quality was also very, very good. And it's no surprising to see the Arctic P12 Slim sitting right there at the top of the graph as well. Not amazing airflow from that fan, but it does offer very, very good airflow to noise quality and airflow to noise ratios um, at various speeds. So the Thermal Right also doing pretty well. The Noctua, as you'd expect, doing pretty well as well, at least at 50 dBA. Um, full speed, not so good. And looking at the Corsair, we're looking at a mid-table result at 50 dBA, and um, slipping down the table by one notch at full speed. Obviously, there the uh, the full speed noise and uh, sound quality not doing great. Um, so it's kind of a mid-table result here for Corsair. 
So a couple of really interesting graphs to talk about here then. We have the airflow to noise efficiency ratio versus price. So the airflow to noise efficiency ratio is the graph that we looked at a couple back. And that's basically um, assessing how much airflow each fan produces for how much noise. So you basically want not much noise, but lots and lots of airflow. So that ratio versus how much the fan actually costs. And what we've got here is um, very efficient fans offering very good value at the top of the graph. So the thermal right um, all of a sudden becomes uh, one of the better fans that you can actually buy in terms of getting the best airflow to noise efficiency for the lowest price. And uh, the Roswell Akasa Slim Fan, again, doing very well. The Arctic doing very well. Uh, very good noise quality and very low price, obviously. One of the more affordable fans here. And the Silverstone Air Slimmer, um, also doing pretty well in this test. It's one of the more expensive fans, but it offers excellent airflow and very low, very low noise levels and also very good noise quality. The Corsair fan, not doing so well. As we know, it's pretty loud at full speed, which is what this, um, which is where this data was taken from. These are all full speed results. Moving on to the next graph then, and slightly more clunky, it's literally just how many meters per second of airflow you get per dollar spent. So pretty easy to get your head around on that one. Again here, the Corsair at full speed, it was offering um, very, very good airflow, but it's one of the, it, it is the joint most expensive fan on test. So that's why, even though it generates lots and lots of airflow at full speed, the fact that it costs two or three times the amount of some other fans means that that's why it's, um, it's not doing great here in terms of getting the most airflow for the least amount of money. So what do we make of the Corsair AF120 RGB Slim then? Well, I think it's proven itself to be a well-made, premium, decent performing slim fan that should definitely be on your shortlist, especially if you already have invested in Corsair's IQ ecosystem for your RGB lighting. It performs pretty well across the board. It doesn't top all the charts, but it still performs very, very, very well in pretty much every single test. Decent noise to performance ratio, good performance at full speed as well. And as I've already mentioned, it's very well made and the RGB lighting looks absolutely fantastic as well. The downside is that it is pretty expensive. You're looking at well over 20 pounds here in the UK for uh, one of these things, uh, standalone. And for the double pack with the lighting low core, you're looking at well over 50 pounds and even more than that in dollars. So you can see all the pricing and links to the individual fan and the double pack down in the description below if you wanna pick it up. But I think if you're going to be kitting out your mini ITX case and you're gonna be keeping it for a while and you just want a decent performing fan with RGB lighting, as I've mentioned, it should definitely be on your shortlist. Now there are better performing fans out there the Silverstone Air Slimmer 120 RGB costs about the same, maybe a little bit less, and it does offer better performance across the board pretty much. So that fan would probably still get my choice. The RGB lighting is maybe a touch better on the Corsair fan, but not by much. And the Silverstone fan obviously has the ability to be hooked up to a standard three pin ARGB uh, header on your motherboard or RGB controller out of the box, whereas the Corsair fan doesn't. So. It's a uh, very, very good fan overall. It, I would still add it to your shortlist, especially if you're already invested in Corsair's ecosystem. And the fact that it comes in a double pack can potentially save, save you money if you're starting off afresh and you don't have any RGB controllers or anything like that. So thanks to Corsair for sending over this awesome, slim 120 millimeter fan today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, and I will catch you soon.